Check one two one two. Check check. Yep. Test test. Okay. Well, we're not quite sure if everyone out on the World Wide Web, if you have the uh, the picture on your screen, but our computer to monitor monitor is telling us that you have sound. And in the water, we have in red, Bobby Martinez with a first wave score of 733. And in blue, Mickey Pecan with a 3.83. And in yellow, Adriana de Souza, who is uh, very possibly at the hospital with a kidney stone. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it, it's been quite a morning already, Nick. You want to fill everyone in? <laughs> it's been quite a morning indeed. And um, welcome to everybody. Second day of the Billabong Pro at Mundaka for 2006. Uh, and let's start at the beginning here, Dave. At about three this morning, an enormous wind change hit this area of the coast of northern Spain. The Basque country was smashed by a westerly change of about 35 knots. Uh, it's still blowing a gale out here, ladies and gentlemen, across the uh, beautiful Mandaka sandbar. And uh, epic, really. It looks like those those old seafaring paintings, doesn't it, Dave? Oh, exactly. Yeah, when the Spanish galleons used to probably just ride, ride along this coast on this very, kind of wind. Very grey and foreboding. Oh, <laughs> so foreboding. But I'll tell you what, there's still some fun waves out there. Uh, this morning, everyone got up thinking, well, there's yeah, not going to be any contest today, but this is just, just uh, proven to be false. The, the sandbars handling this... Uh, changing conditions quite well. A westerly wind is kind of sideshore inside the bay at Mundaka. And um, this morning, Bobby Martinez and, and Mickey Picon in the first heat came down and they were totally frothing. They'd, they had enough of sitting around all day yesterday waiting for their heat to go. Repeatedly, the event was, was delayed. Put on and hold every half an hour for the entire afternoon. Yeah, and... and so uh, the, you can imagine the head of steam that builds up in a top competitor. You know, you, you, you're trying to prepare yourself to put on a world-class performance, but you don't know when it's going to be. Yeah. So these boys got to the beach this morning. I said, listen, don't, let's not mess around. Let's get out there. There's waves, right? Let's go. And so, boom, they're out there right now. The, the man in yellow, Adriano D'Souza, um, uh, a shock non-appearance this morning. Uh, apparently, he's, he's having health problems. Um, he he uh, appeared to be uh, having a kidney stone episode yesterday afternoon and and uh he may well be in hospital at the moment with that it's a um serious medical problem way for being adriano. checked out by the doctors in bilbao yeah definite yeah, totally. definite problems for adriano but uh, that's 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 all added to the mix of uh, of, of everything know. that's happened over the first 24 hours here at the billabong pro <laughs> it's a big rev up i can tell yeah. you um Rain, sun, offshore winds. Last night was, I mean, woke up this morning driving down the road from the hotel where, where we're staying with the webcast crew. It's just littered with branches and pine cones and just looked like a, a full twister had blown through the area last night. And it is still raining outside, actually, but the wind has dropped off a bit. We can see a little bit of blue sky trying to peek out through the clouds right now. That's right. Yeah. And... Uh, also, I'd just like to warn everybody out there uh, in web world, if we, if we seem to go on and off a bit this morning, uh, the reason is that uh, this weather is causing the occasional power outage in the competition area, and that's uh, potentially going to affect the webcast. Uh, hopefully not too much, hopefully not at all, in fact, but we've just got to let you know that. Uh, give you a little bit of head start and warning. Yeah. We've already had the generator go down twice this morning, which means every time it does, we have to reboot the entire webcast program on every sing in every single language. I believe we've got English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese coming at you. So uh, that's four computers to reboot, plus the entire scoring system and all the rest. So please bear with us if the screen does go blank or if you lose video, power, sound, whatever. Uh, 
We are dealing with a few technical difficulties here in Mundaka this morning. In the water, though, that action seems to be going all right. It sure does, uh, Dave. And um, yeah, if you have just logged on with us, uh, I'm Nick Carroll. I'm here with Dave Marmon at Mundaka for the Billabong Pro 2006, and we have men's well round one, one men. yeah. round one <laughs> heat number three men and boys all together in the water today yeah, lisa anderson's not in this one no. <laughs> we'll bring her out of retirement yeah. have a men's and women's but not this time not this time uh currently leading this heat the surfer in blue from france mickey picon has three waves he's got a 4.5 and a 3.83 in his top scoring uh series Coming second right now in the red, Bobby Martinez, only one wave under his belt, but it's a really good one, a 7.33. And, and um, Bobby's first wave, just he, he got out a lot of aggro on that wave. Oh, uh, definitely. <laughs> you could see all the tension of having to sit around yesterday waiting for his heat to maybe happen, maybe not happen. Uh, and he just brought it all out and unleashed it onto a really nice little three to four foot peeling Mundaka wall and must have done like 12 or 13 easily off the, off the lip snaps. snaps. Yeah. It was ferocious, and now he sits quietly out the back, uh, having got a little bit of that angst out of his system. And I was surprised, actually. I mean, it's uh, it's actually head high, even a tiny bit overhead on the set. So it looks a lot smaller when no one's out there, but as soon as Bobby stood up, it's like, okay, well, they made the right decision. Oh, yeah, you know if, it. If there's waves at Mundaka, you got to run heats, even if it's only head high and a little windy. But you know what? Mickey, on his second wave, got a beautiful little tube through that, that second section while we were trying to deal with... Uh, all of our technical difficulties. So there's even barrels out here, a little few yeah. and far between. Here's a little set rolling in now. Well, a pretty serious set, I think, actually. It's yeah, a, it's it's a probably the biggest solid. wave we've seen this morning so yeah. far. Good solid four foot wave and maybe even a little bit bigger. It's wedging down this sound by the wind blowing sideshore offshore, and Bobby Martinez in the red turns and takes this wave. He's going to drive it down to the middle sandbar section. You can see. Uh, if you were watching yesterday, you would have noticed that uh, the sandbar was getting higher and higher all the way through our two heats yesterday. To this morning it's pretty low and you can see Bobby accelerating down the inside there, smashing a beautiful off the lip that finishes right. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot more draw off the sandbar today, Dave. Uh, there definitely is. And Nick, that's one of the things with uh, the new Mundaka, since the bank has come back, the wave actually works on, uh, on higher tides and with less swell than it did in the past. And we're definitely seeing that out here this morning. As it is last night, everyone thought it was going to be flat. We couldn't didn't run any heats yesterday afternoon. We thought the swell was dropping, and uh, but I guess this little wind and uh, rain that we had, the squall that went through last night, has kind of kicked up a little bit of the local wind swell. And from the right direction, and with the sandbar as perfect as it is, we've got really good waves out here. Yeah, indeed. Um, Quite a surprise, actually. <laughs> Quite a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everyone when we got to site this morning, there was probably only the two surfers in the water who really want, thought that we could do something and really wanted to run something. Although I do remember you telling me, don't be surprised if we do run at, over breakfast. But at that point, it was still raining sideways. But now, hey, sun's out, at least on certain parts of the sky. The wind is side offshore. Surfers are in the water. And Bobby Martinez for right now really taking it to Mickey Picon, a 7.5 on that last one. Wow. So Mickey is now uh, in second position and comboed, looking for a 14.84. And here he comes, answering back and looking for a tube. He's in. Can he make it out? Uh, through the doggy door. Well, he's a, he's a muscular guy, Mickey Picon, really good balance, and he will bulldoze his way through a lot of Definitely. crumbly tubes like that one. But well, Of um, course, coming from the Hossiger cap Breton area, the, the land region of France where we were, ju where we were just at uh, the last two weeks for the Quicksilver Pro France up there. And uh, so Mickey knows all about tube riding, especially in dredging sand bottom barrels, and that's exactly what this wave is at Mundaka. As you could see on that one, well overhead, and Mickey trying to make his way through that first tube section, but not quite. He knows he's going to have to pull something out of his hat to answer back to a, a combo of 14.83 from uh, Bobby Martinez. But hey, it's never over till it's over. Oh no, that's we right. Well, and only half, not even halfway through the heat actually. 30-minute heats today. We forgot to mention that uh, yesterday was 35s. Today with it's a bit more of a wind swell out here, so more waves coming through, even if not quite as large or shapely as yesterday. So we've gone down to 30-minute heat, still 15 wave max, top two wave scores count. Not much doesn't change in 16 minutes and 15 seconds remaining, Nick. 
It looks like another set's rolling through. Yeah, well, you know, Dave, I'm, I'm sure that it is more consistent this morning than it was yesterday, and 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 there's a double layer as well. I think there's, there's clearly a, a still the remnant of yeah. the ground soil from yesterday running underneath this wind swell, and uh, occasionally the two kind of connect and and form something a little bit yeah. more muscular. But uh, oh, there's a lot of broken up wind swell waves peeling down the bank, and every now and then there's a there's a unobstructed clean little ground swell wave as well. And, uh, I guess the the battle for the surfers this morning is is going to be um, picking the wave right selection. Man, exactly. it's a really really tricky day for that sort of stuff. You could you could go out there and have a really good time free surfing this morning, uh, catch a hundred waves in an hour and 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 just muck around on all of them. But when you when you really want to try and catch the two best wave that comes through come through in half an hour, that's a big ask out here at Mundaka this morning, Dave. Oh, definitely. And here we go. Bobby Martinez up and riding again, but there we go. We were talking about wave choice, wave selection, and that one looked like it had a little wall on it. And Case in point, though, buddy, huh? Yeah, it's exactly. Like crumbled off down the line, that one. And Mickey's actually moved all the way out the back. Uh, he's sitting right on the normal takeoff spot, which could pay if he can manage to get one of those lines that's still coming in. Okay, and your messages are starting to roll through. And that, that's not Snips on there. It's Dave Mailman, but it is true. We do have a very similar accent. Of course, Mike Parsons out of Laguna Beach and myself from Corona Del Mar, California, about six miles up the road. Yeah, but I should say that... Thanks Corona, for the compliment, Corona, though. <laughs> Corona Del Mar does kick ass on Laguna Beach, huh? That's what I've heard. Most definitely. Most definitely. All you Laguna boys just working on their paintings and their music up in Corona Del Mar, we're surfing. No, well, anyways, we love the Laguna Beach boys. Way too many messages rolling through way too quickly, and we have a mix of all languages coming in at the same time. So for all of you fans of hearing your email messages read out, we're going to have to wait till things slow down a bit. If we can catch a few good ones on the way as the screen unrolls in front of our eyes, we will. And in the meantime, still out in the water, Bobby Martinez, Mickey Picon, Adriano de Souza is definitely not going to make it for this heat. 13 minutes, 40 seconds left, and mm. young Minarino uh, seems to be in hospital with a kidney stone. I'll give you more info on that as we get it. But right now, Bobby Martinez well out in front, Mickey Picon trying to come back from a combo situation. Bobby, of course, scoring a 7 3 3 and a 7 5, and here he is, Mickey answering back, Nick. Ooh. Well, I uh, noticed that Mick uh, waited on a very shallow part of the sandbar. I think he was thinking maybe there's going to be a tube right off the takeoff. It didn't happen that time, but he came on strong with a big snap off the top, drove it down the line, and it's an okay wave score. It's I don't think it's this kind of thing he needs to catch Bobby at the moment, who now has moved into position for a nice little wave yeah. himself. And Bobby Martinez uh, all the way from Ventura, California. And he just saw how that well. wind swell on that one just doubled up with the ground swell, and yeah, Bobby's going to town. Unfortunately, coming unstuck on that last one, but actually kind of a similar wave to Mickey. Very Good much. first turn, and then from there it just kind of petered out into the channel, but yeah. there's definitely still highly contestable waves out here this morning. Okay. Very much. There we are, very tired, looking not very nice at all on our big screen here. Yeah, don't worry about you it. We're right. <laughs> <laughs> They're long nights here in Spain. We can yes, they it. are. <laughs> the happy hour starts early, ends late, and... Uh, 7.30 call this morning, so just keep an eye on the surf. Make the action in the water a little bit better than uh, the action here in the booth. And, um, yeah, just, just to catch up on things, we've just got underway here at Mundaka in the Billabong Pro for 2006 heat, number three of round one. And we'll be running on as far as we can this morning, as far as the tide allows us, uh, trying to make use of this uh, beautiful Spanish wave to get a good chunk of round number one of this crucial event uh, out of the way as soon as we can and move on into the into the meat of this um, contest where we may well see a world champion crowned. Well, all he needs to do is win, huh? Or uh, actually, there's a few scenarios, I guess. Still, it's kind of hard to follow, but well, it's it's hard to follow. But there are there are people out there in uh, ASP world who have 
the most amazing touch with like mathematics and stuff. And Fernando Hickel and Al Hunt. That's right. And they, they've sat down using their primitive calculating machines. <laughs> they have figured out exactly what needs to happen uh, for each of uh, top-ranked surfers to um, uh, make a real move on the world championship for 2006. Of course, in the lead right now is Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater. He's, he's been leading since the uh, first event of the year, the Quicksilver Pro at Snapper Rocks, which he won handily from Taj Burrow. Uh, those two surfers really have made the running this year and um, they currently sit in first and second on the rankings still after, well, we're into our eighth event right now. Ninth event. Ninth event. <coughs> event and number nine out of 11. So, um, And, hey, another little amazing tidbit, funny fact. Taj Burrow is currently sitting in second position and he, out of the top five, is the only surfer who hasn't won an event this year. It, it, it is amazing. Taj has to be overdue for a victory. He's, he's come really close a couple of times. Uh, I know he's, he's, well, let's watch Mickey here. Mickey Picon from France drawing a line into the outside barrel section of Mundaco. It, it clips him, though, and, and Mickey's dust, and I think he'll just stay in second place after that ride, not a big score. Um, out the back is uh, his opponent, uh, who I have to say is a quite a fearsome opponent, Bobby Martinez um, from Santa Barbara in California, is lurking outside now in position for a wave. Uh, he's got a handy lead right now, Bobby, with a, a, a couple of seven and a half point rides. Mickey's and last wave was 6.0, so he's out of the combo situation, but still lots of work to do, especially if Bobby comes out of that. Yeah, Ooh. There you <laughs> see the, the tube riding finesse that won Bobby the, the Billabong Pro at Chaopu this year. Uh, his ability for a fairly solidly built guy to fit himself up into those tight almond shaped barrels and to change his body shape and change his trim speed to match. Uh, a, front side tube is, is it's really amazing technique um and uh, like he i yeah you know, i dare to say that he's he's um uh definitely one of the favorites here at mundaka his, his style is just so suited to this way but it must occasionally remind him of uh riding a, a front side version of his home semi home break rink on uh definitely uh actually even a little bit more hollow and then ooh, as we see mickey with a snap and floats over that section Connects it out to the shoulder and decides to kick out. That was probably a good choice. 6.0 on that last wave of Mickey. So he's looking for an 8.83 right now. And, uh, yeah, Mundaka definitely a little bit more hollow than, uh, than Rincon. But other than that, actually, this is, I think, the closest comparison to a wave on tour would be uh, Mundaka is kind of like a reversed version of La Jolla from the search contest somewhere in Mexico or Jeffrey's Bay. Um and Bobby was actually the standout backside surfer in Max, so he'll be frothing to oh. experience some of the same conditions here. Oh, I can only imagine. You, you can see now uh, on your screens, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have vision right now, you'll see Jared House, uh, surfer from South Australia, uh, moving down to his heat. He's going to be he heat number four this morning uh, with a couple of fearsome opponents, Taylor Knox of California and Trent Munro from Australia. Out the back, Bobby Martinez pulls in, kicks out. Nothing much happens on that ride. Bobby continues to hold his lead. There's about seven and a half minutes remaining in uh, this heat. Between right now, there should be three surfers in the water. There's only two uh, uh, missing surfer, Adriano D'Souza. We believe uh, he's uh, got medical problems. He, he had a kidney stone episode yesterday afternoon, and... Um, That'll that'll take the wind out of any competitor, <laughs> along with a number of other things. <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, Adriano may well be uh, missing until round two. And, yes, we definitely wish him a speedy recovery and definitely hope that he will be back for round two because Adriano is having a pretty good uh, start for a rookie season, sitting 22nd in the world right now. Uh, which for a rookie is not bad. Of course, Bobby Martinez is a rookie as well, uh, sitting in seventh position right now, all, all the way in the top ten, and was actually in the top five for uh, the, maj the major part of the year, just dropping out of that his, his fourth position after the last event, getting taken out actually by a, a 2007 CT qualifier and a Quicksilver wild card, Jeremy Flores. Yeah. Jeremy really just causes some nightmares for people every year up in France. 
But Bobby's trying to make his way back from this one. Speaking of another French surfer, there's Mickey Picon, the only Frenchman on the WCT in 2006. And Bobby out the back following him up. Pulling he's going to come out of this one, too. Whoa, God. Bobby is just loving Mundaka this morning. Yeah, he's, he's, um, his surfing's uh, always fired up by a lot of passion, Bobby Martinez. Definitely. And he's really, uh, he's showing um, that the, that angst from yesterday, he's still getting it out of his system, I think, in this seat, just not letting the foot off. He's got a really good lead, but he's, he's just coming back and just kicking uh, old Mick yeah. back down the ranks with each set wave. That's a uh, pretty impressive performance here from Bobby Martinez, I think. Uh, he's firing. I mean, just look at his score line. 7-3-3 on his first wave. 7-5, 7-2-3, 6-2-3. There he's gone and gotten another barrel and followed it up with uh, just a series of hacks and snaps all the way through the inside, finishing and kicking out right in front of Mickey as well, just kind of going. Oh, yeah. You know, Mickey, love you, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> check this out, buddy. Yeah, and <laughs> okay, uh, judge number three has got his first wave score in, and, and the rest one. of them are dropping as well. That will be our first excellent wave score of the day, and I believe our well, it'll be third the excellent wave score of the event. Yeah. Of course, it'll only in our third heat <laughs> after, <laughs> after two days surfing, 8.83. Highest wave score of the event to go with Tom Whitaker's 8.83 from yesterday for his absolutely filthy oh, pit. How filthy was that pit one? It was beautiful wave there by Tom yesterday, and uh, th you know you'll see that happen in round number one. You know people will uh, ha go on runs like they did. Uh, other times you'll see heats where all the surfers seem to be kind of a little bit off, and then one of them will just seize the momentum at some point in the heat and run away with it. Um, Bobby Martinez has held the 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 momentum from the very, very start, start of this season, exactly. and, and he's I think he's probably going to flow into a pretty good win here. It's uh, there's only about four and a half minutes, or a little bit less than that, to go in the heat. Already, uh, surfers in the next heat are paddling into the lineup, and uh, you know, oddly enough, little stray glints of sunlight creeping down onto the lineup here at Mundaka now after a very gloomy morning. It's it's not looking like such a bad day after yeah. all. Well, actually, we thought it was all dark this morning because of the rain clouds and it's actually because it's the, the uh, headland on the other side of the bay that's still blocking the sun yeah it's it's uh, a trip here ladies and gentlemen and the sun it, it, you don't even see any light in the sky till it's like quarter past seven uh, seven thirty in the morning and seven thirty call it's still dark when we get down the first little glimmers starting to come over the top of the headland on the other side of the bay but right now partly cloudy mostly cloudy but some blue sky up there. The sun's trying to peek through. And out in the lineup, last wave of blue. Mickey Picon a 5.1. And Bobby's two-wave total is 7.5 on his second wave and 8.83 on his last one. And he's throwing away a 6.23, a 7.23, and a 7.33, which are scores that most other surfers would like to have in their score line out here. And Bobby's just going, nah, we'll yeah, he's drop that one in the trash. He's pretty much uh, won two heats, really, there, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's he should have saved a little bit for round two, for round three, actually, because Bobby will be going straight through to round three. And here's Mickey on the inside. There's, there's his first turn. Nice off the lip snap. God, you know, like Mickey really enjoys this wave. He comes down surf Mundaka a lot, yeah. but Bobby, I don't know, he just ate his Wheaties this morning. Totally, yeah. He put the special his sauce on top, I guess. I gotta say, Mick, Mickey's had a tough year this year. It's a, he's had a classic rookie year where where um, he's he's uh, had pretty much everything go wrong every event one yeah. after another he's he's surfed some really really tough heats but he's been he's uh, been he's a, a really a whisker away he's a great surfer he's, he's been a, really a whisker away surfer. from win yeah. winning a lot of heats and uh has just let rookie mistakes and uh you know some bad luck kind of has gotten in his way and one technical uh little mistake that he decided not to back up his rookie season on the wct with uh, WQS events, yeah, and uh, you know when you see how guys like Bruce Irons and Chris Ward and others have you know almost missed requalification in the rookie season, you got to tell yourself you know you have to at least surf a couple of the big QSs at the beginning of the year to get some points on the board on both tours. Oh yeah, there, there is a risk of that uh, happening to any of the top pros. I noticed some um, like Roy um, Powers and. Uh, Jared Howes, David Weir are all sitting down in the 40s along with Mickey, and those are some 
pretty big names in surfing as well. Oh, very much. And I noticed at number 33, Nathan Hedge. He's a he's like a regular resident of the top 10, hey. and he's just been kicked down the ranks hey. this year with a, a series of really hard heats. Trent Monroe at 30th, Jake Patterson 31, Peterson Rosa 31, Troy Brooks 33. I mean. There are some big names in surfing that have been just absolute stalwarts on the WCT for ages, and all these guys this year are uh, sitting outside of the top 27 on the CT and outside of the top 15 on the yeah. QS. So, once again, a big changeover. Oh uh, yeah, and it can happen in store for next year. You know? yeah. it just boom, a couple of months down the line after the after the year started, and you're already behind the eight ball. It can happen. Uh, just 40 seconds remaining now in this first this heat of the morning. pretty much a done deal, Nick, I think. It is really pretty much a done deal, and we'll be moving on with uh, heat number four, Taylor Knox, Trent Munro, and Jared House in uh, just a few seconds' time. Uh, stay with us here at Mundaka for the Billabong Pro 2006. Maybe the critical event of this year, in fact. Uh, not one to miss, I would think, Dave. No, definitely not. Next one coming up. So Taylor Knox currently sitting in the sixth position, top ten in the world for Mr. Knoxie, and up against Trent Monroe and Jared Howes.